Hey, would you like to know why you get tension specifically in a part of your body? Would you like to know why you're always having this reoccurring thought patterns? Why you've always got maybe the same emotional loop going on? My name's Alistair Hart and I'm the founder of Heartspace. And after being someone that's over the last 10 years has really gone and dived in to uh, my inner self, um, to my emotions, my subconscious, and also done a lot of the inner engineering that the yogis teach. Um, as a yoga teacher, a part of my journey was to study the sutras, which is the ancient texts, and really start to go through other different traditions as well, the Taoist traditions in Eastern um, medicine, but also looking at the Hindu tradition and really how the yogis actually mapped out the science of the human body. And now in the Western tradition, um, there's been a lot of uh, blending. There's some things that necessarily in modern medicine they don't necessarily account for. For example, uh, in different traditions, they call it chi, they call it life force, they call it prana, they call it energy. It's the electromagnetic, it's the life force energy that exists in our body, okay? We, we breathe it in, it's all around us. Plants have it, trees have it, animals have it, rocks have it, everything has a life force. And our human body is a very specific, what I call ordained. It's an, it's an ordered system, okay? It's an ordinated system, which means that it's been put together precisely. It's not haphazardly, yeah, we'll put an arm here, a leg there. It's, it's so, so finely tuned um, with the amount of organs and glands and the nerve endings and like what different traditions call the nadis, which are the nerve pathways, which is there's thousands and tens of thousands of these things. Like we are a complete energetic system, okay? Which is really, really important because I started to, this is only through direct experience. It's known in the texts, but when you go and experience it for yourself, it completely changes your life. So energy that's inside the body here, I've got my little friend, my little character, it worked out better in pencil, uh, but when I went over it, it turned a bit funky. He's got the right amount of fingers, he doesn't have a smile, but you get there. Um, and if we look at this energy current that's coming up, these squiggly lines, right, that are moving through uh, a human being, it's representing a human being here, uh, is we're an electromagnetic field, we're an atomic energy structure, okay? We're made up of atoms, atoms are constantly fluctuating in a state of flux, they're there and they're not there. So we're this plasmic atomic nuclear reactor, this mini sun essentially. Human beings are these mini little planets, right? We're mostly empty space because atoms are mostly empty space, they're 99.9% .9 empty space um, and they're vibrating slow enough to see. So for you to see anything in this physical reality, it means that it's vibrating slow enough to appear solid. I'll say that again. For you to see anything in this physical reality, it's only because it's vibrating slow enough to appear solid. What that means is that it is a, uh, well, what is physical? Well, you, you think you can touch something, but the truth is, is that the stimuli that are going through your skin, through your nerve cells that are providing stimulus into your brain to tell you that you're touching your partner's hand or your dog or your cat uh, is really just the perception that you're touching something. Um, because most of the thing that's there is constantly like flickering like a light bulb. It's there and it's not there, it's there and it's not there. You can't even really determine if it's there or not there because that's how fast it's moving. But if you were to slow it down enough, you would actually see that it's not permanent. But as human beings, our visible light spectrum, the visible uh, band of light that we can actually see is a fraction of what's actually there. We can only hear a fraction of the sound frequencies, the decibels that are actually available to us. So as humans, our perception of awareness really determines the reality. And if our perception of awareness is just at a really basic level, and that's because it's needed to survive, um, then that's what it is. But what's really important is you can actually feel it. You don't necessarily have to see it to feel it, okay? And what I'm gonna explain here is that as a human being, we actually have what's called karma. And karma is the soul's evolution. It's our story, it's our actions and our deeds. It's essentially the thumbprint of our soul's past. We are eternal beings and through each lifetime, we are endowed with specific gifts, challenges, uh, and a specific kind of energy. And it's really what we do with that energy that determines our karma. Are we gonna 
contribute to the broader collective consciousness? Are we going to deal with um, specific issues, self-worth, greed, lust, gluttony, like whatever these experiences are sometimes that, you know, all human beings are receptive to because we're all um, the energies that exist on this plane. Uh, when we have those experiences, what happens is, is our ability to um, neutralize them and to kind of um, dissolve them rather than ultimately our karma is a result of our attachment to something. And attachment can be aversion, ooh, I don't like that, or it can also be uh, attachment to something. Regardless, aversion, moving away, ooh, I don't like that. That's, exact, that's still attachment because you're attaching to not liking that. Whereas same as if you want to go after something, whether it's relationships or money or sex, right? Which are the, some of the common themes that we have um, in this human experience, right? So what happens is, is your karma actually becomes encoded within your body. So when you have a particular karmic pattern, it's actually stored in the subtle field of energy that exists all around us. Now, people say that your soul is inside your body. Actually, your body is inside your soul because your soul actually moves beyond your physical field. We know that because you can sense um, someone beyond the skin of their, of their bones, okay? You can sense their electromagnetic field. You can feel somebody's energy beyond them. You can be standing 10 meters away from them and feel them. You can telepathically connect to them and you can sense them. You can be on the other side of the world that people don't even necessarily have to be alive and you can still perceive this energy of someone, which goes to show that the soul is not in their body. It is everywhere, okay? This is what we call a higher self, higher soul, over soul. But it's, it's consolidated within the avatar of our human body because our avatar is not only a um, you know a sealed container for our life force and contains the majority of our actions in which we have a beginning and an end point so we think of life we have a certain amount of years but this is actually what's called the koshas and we'll go into that into another video but the koshas pretty much fold the entire energetic universe down into the different layers down into the physical layer or it moves out from the physical layer into the etheric, astral, emotional um, thought plane into the universal cosmic plane. I'm just trying to squat here because I'm a bit taller than my stand. So what's interesting is the body that we're given is actually an accumulation of our karma. The, the language that we use, the emotions that we have, the thoughts that we have, the way in which we move is actually encoded with our physiology. So the life that we're given obviously is dictated by our conditioning, the experiences that we have in our life. But the nature of that is also influenced by our karma, okay? Some people just like to throw it off the cuff or, you know, this is the life that I've got because of my karma. But the beauty of karma is that it actually gets you towards your dharma, which dharma is just the way of nature, it's the way of life, it's being in union with your karma, being able to, to release your karmic patterns, okay? And the reason that we have karma is because it allows us to learn. If this nature of reality is one of duality, it's a dichotomy, it's left, it's right, it's up, it's down, it's in, it's out, it's good, it's bad, it's light, it's dark. Um, and because of that, that creates that oscillation creates friction and that creates movement and that movement creates knowledge and wisdom and life experiences and that's ultimately why human beings uh, and all of creation exist in the first place is because at one point there was a soul uh, sorry uh, a samadhi uh, an atman a, a unity consciousness source consciousness was all one but in that place it wanted to experience what else there was other than its its union okay because if there was union um, it wouldn't know happiness because it wouldn't know sadness. It would just be this kind of equanimous, which is called equanimity. It would be this state of um, indifference, okay? So to know and to experience things, it had to fracture itself uh, in fractals and, and move outwards and into, into the universal cosmic plane. It's every direction, right? And then that's the nature that we live. We move into specific directions. Oh, you know, oh, this relationship, oh, I'm learning about this. I'm learning about self-worth or I'm learning about intimacy or I'm learning about jealousy. Uh, and then you learn that experience and ideally you don't continue to make the same pattern. You've integrated that, you've come back to your center, you've learned and you no longer need to repeat that pattern. Uh, and this is why it's important because what we resist persists. 
So going back to our physical body, what's really important here is that the karma that's actually installed in our body is evident. It's evident in the way that we talk. It's evident in the injuries that we have. And Chinese herbalist medicine traditions also associate different parts of the body uh, with different things. Um, you know, anger can be in the kidneys and rage and, and grief can be in the lungs, right? They associate different emotional states and trauma within the body because what happens is, is as we saw it, said that universal energy comes out and moves out into the universe, it then descends and moves down into this earth plane and it moves through the fabric of reality and comes into the physical born as we're born as a baby and then the body starts to take shape, the spine, the kidneys, the glands, the skeletal system, the nervous system, all of it starts to fuse, right? Even in the womb, all right? This is also occurring in the womb, okay? This is not, this is how the soul manifests. This is how karma manifests. It actually occurs um, within the, the womb, okay? Uh, and then as the, as the being starts to grow, they're given this template, they're given this encoding of karma. And this is why powerful practices like yoga, and yoga is not just the movement practices that you see at the gym that everybody's doing, because that's one aspect of eight aspects of yoga. And the reason, which is called asana, and the reason why asana is important is because it opens up the energy channels of the body. And then you can be relaxed enough to sit and meditate and do the other aspects of yoga, the breathing, the movement of um, the muscles and the bundas and the energy centers and focusing on abstaining from breath and starting to prepare the body so that you can actually start to explore inside of yourself with your consciousness. But ideally the exploration that you're experiencing is one where you're trying to still your mind to a point that you have no thought. And the reason why you do that is because then it allows all of the energy to come up to be released. And different traditions have this, like Vipassana meditation show this, um, which is the Buddhist tradition, which was the tradition that Buddha, uh, practice that Buddha did, um, that allowed him to actually uh, become self-realized. It was the process that led him to an enlightenment. And I've had very enlightening experiences doing Vipassana, but what I've learned from my teacher in yoga is that all of the experiences that I've had in life are because of the karma. If I've always had a particular injury on something or there's always been a story around my chest being sore or, or kind of posture being closed or because it's not opening, I'm not opening to my truth, I'm not speaking my truth, I'm not acting uh, in the way that I'm called to act in this life. My karma is to manifest itself, to be released and to move out into the world. And what happens is, is it's installed in the body. So when you see and adepts and people that are very specialized at uh, this type of energy awareness, they can look at someone and even just by their physiology of how they're standing, they can see where the energy is and they will know, okay, that is associated with this type of energy, these type of emotions or thought patterns, which is the stuff that I've been learning. So first you have to apply it to yourself before you apply it to other people. Um, but what's really empowering with this is the science has been mapped out, the systems are known, which is really, really empowering because all you have to do is practice it and that's why it's called a practice. And every time you meditate and you do these basic yoga um, postures and do this very specific formula, what you start to do is you start to unkink and uncoil this energy. As human beings, this energy a lot of the time gets blocked uh, in the root, in the sacral, in the genital region, and also connected into the earth, right? A lot of people don't actually have a good connection naturally with the earth, okay? Because they've been um, almost like um, cut off from it because they're now so connected to technology, they're living inside, they're wearing rubber on the soles of their shoes, they're not out in nature all the time, they're not breathing and connecting and consciously being mindful of the connection to the earth, feeling their feet in the soil, the sand, the water. But when you build that connection into the earth, um, that starts to open up the channels. And again, it goes through all of these different energy centers because we have several major energy centers within the body. We'll talk about that in another video. But what's really important is just start to notice within yourself where you have specific um, blockages of energy. Oh, it's the shoulder blade or it's this energy or it's this knee. Um, and just be aware of that, okay? Just start to say, okay, what is this? And I guarantee you, if, if, if you do practice or do meditate and you're able to sit comfortably and get into that place, 
and bring your attention and awareness to that point. Focus on your breath uh, and just start to steal your mind and start to ask that part of the body, what is it? What story is it? What is this issue that's facing you? Why is this always there? And you'll start to see maybe after a couple of practices or if you're fortunate the first time you'll get a clear vision or you'll get an insight into what that is. It could have been something that happened when you were a child, someone said something to you, something happened, that kind of, it, a traumatic event seized inside the body, your consciousness wasn't able to process it because it was a wounding, it didn't know what to do, so it processed it and it stored it somewhere. And this is the reality that we live in now. Most people are walking out in the world with their trauma actually encoded and, and capsulated within their body. So, that's the beauty of the life because then we spend the rest of our life unpacking that, releasing that energy, getting the energy to move, move freely and we're moving out into the world with more potency, uh, clarity and because this that I'm talking about here is not just inside your body, we have an electromagnetic field that moves out within our entire um, like a battery, we're a magnetic being, right? So our uh, auric field or our electromagnetic field uh, moves beyond seven to, seven to 15 feet of our body, okay? I can sense people in the other room, I definitely know if there's something in my room, um, and you can actually start to feel because your electromagnetic heat, because what is energy? It's kinetic, it's thermal, it's bioelectric, it's electrical, like we're actually this uh, electromagnetic force field, right? So that energy is not just stored within your kidneys or your liver or your lower back, but it then kind of um, dissipates out into your larger electromagnetic field. And many um, psychics or gurus or sages or adepts, metaphysicians, you know, um, magicians, um, they can actually sense this energy. And um, you can actually, some psychics can actually see uh, that within the field. So we all carry it, we all have our stories. Um, but this is the beautiful path now is being able to dive into yourself literally and metaphysically and allegorically um, and start to unwind that energy and when you release that energy you have a massive expansion spaciousness of energy that opens up more space okay more space to create more space for, of, of positive experiences to come in that are really in alignment with your soul what you really want to do so let me know leave your thoughts or comments please if you like this if it resonates share i'm back here i'm committing to doing uh, more videos um, as i write this program so if you're interested in going down this journey uh, let me know uh, because it's one of the best things that you can ever do with your life because it, <laughs> at the end of the day you'll have to come back next one and the one after and again and again and again until you sort it out so the beautiful part is doing it this time around Lots of love, Alistair Hart, see you soon, Hot Space, peace.